All right, in this video, I have a new pair of sneakers, Nike box you could see here. This is one that I was kind of interested in seeing in hand and trying on. And honestly, there's a lot of history behind this model, but I don't know if a lot of people really care about it. Uh, anyway, I'll cover a little bit of it in this video, but we have the Nike box with white and red. And then inside of the white and red box, we have a white and orange uh, colorway of the airships. So the airship is actually the one before the Air Jordan 1. There was a lot of controversy about this one through the years uh, because this is a shoe that Jordan wore before the uh, the Air Jordan 1s. So it comes with this little booklet, which is kind of red. Oh, this is fire. Uh, anyway, it's crazy because the hype seems to have died down a lot on these. I got these for retail. They were sitting on a random boutique site that dropped and uh, this is super cool. This has like actual information on the airship inside of uh, the booklet. It's an actual booklet. There's a couple pages in here. A very nice uh, addition that they added in uh, to this package. But I got a size 9. Normally I'm a 9.5. I haven't tried them on as at the point of this video yet. Uh, so I'll leave a comment or an overlay on, on the, the fit of them. Because I'm assuming they fit like an Air Jordan 1. Because the outsole does look uh, very similar like. So this is the white and team orange colorway. And it says the Jordan Airship PESP. Uh, and uh, again, just crazy that they, they dropped some of them. And it feels like they're going to be doing a lot more of this model. And leave a comment in the comment section. What do you guys think? Do you guys uh, hate the fact that they're making a ton of them? Or are you guys like okay with it? I think that at the end of the day, Nike is a business and so is Jordan brand. So obviously they want to make as much money as they can off of the products. Uh, and there is a lot of nostalgia that is fragmented from back in the day about this product. And there's a history behind it that I think that is enticing to some consumers out there, which is primarily why I bought my pair uh, that I have here. So uh, big shout out to MJO23 Dan. He's really the one that brought the airship to the, the media side of things. And really, I think he had a petition out there to bring back the, the airship and whatnot as well. So loosely, the way the story goes is everybody kind of knows the, the band Air Jordan 1s. In fact, Jordan Brand celebrated the band Air Jordan 1s by releasing an outlet only pair of red and black uh, bread, whatever, uh, Air Jordan ones that had the red X on the back. Premium materials on them. I had those. I still wish I had those shoes. I shouldn't have got rid of them. They were super, super nice though. Uh, but any which way, that is a shoe that was supposedly uh, banned, quote unquote, from the NBA. There was a letter that went out to Nike uh, from the NBA that said they would find Jordan every single time that he wore those sneakers in a game. And he continued to wear the sneakers and then uh, just got fined for it. So that's the way it was remembered. But MJO23 Dan actually ended up debunking uh, that and it wasn't the banned Air Jordan 1s that they actually banned it was the airships at the time and the airship was a different Nike model that uh, Jordan was wearing before the Jordan 1s uh, came out and this is uh, a version of what that looked like back then and so that's kind of why there's a lot of lust for the shoe because it's the one before the Air Jordan 1 it's the true model that ended up getting banned they do have a colorway of the Nike uh, airships and the band colorway as well which is probably the most hyped up colorway but I like orange and I was like you know this is kind of fire I got an orange colorway of the bands and then I also recently got like an AJKO in like the white and orange colorway too so just a fan of orange in general like I'm a fan of the shattered backboards because of the black and the orange and the cream color but like this just goes to show you like the, the love for the color is just deeper than the hype uh, of that one model. And mostly because I'm an Oregon State alumni and uh, the Oregon State Beavers and stuff. So orange is like our colors. Uh, but anyway, this uh, this model is really interesting. So this is my first uh, attempt to review the shoe, my first look in hand. The overall upper and the shape looks pretty cool. It's weird to see an Air Jordan-esque sneaker, like the soles on the bottom here, but with different leather panels on the side. Like there's reinforcement down across here, but there's actually some stretch material right here, which is interesting. I didn't know that they added that a nylon little stretch material down there and then you have the piping for the laces and then the top goes all the way uh, down and around the back where it says Nike Air and then the Nike swoosh uh, comes up to the back and then there is a center strip of leather uh, right here on the, the heel that uh, kind of joins the seams together. A perforation on the toe box, nylon tongue, something we're very familiar with with an Air Jordan 1. The collar height is a little bit lower than the Air Jordan 1s it looks like, but all in all it's actually really weird to see something that's like similarly different to the Air Jordan 1 because the panels are so different and we're so familiar and used to the panels the way that the regular uh, Jordan 1s look. Anyways, that being said, they do have this little booklet here and it says the Airship Owner's Manual. It says the Nike Airship PE, a unique cushioning system has been built into the Nike Ship PE that brings to the basketball court lightweight and shock absorbency usually found only in the best running shoes. A polyurethane encapsulated air sole 
is located in the heel to reduce impact shock, which can be four to eight times your body weight when landing after a jump. The polyurethane heel midsole is a durable foam compound that has been formulated for maximum shock absorbency while ensuring lightweight and flexibility. Together, the aerosol and the polyurethane midsole provides unmatched comfort and protection against the demand of the hardwood. The outsole features the exclusive low to the ground flex sole design, utilizing a low profile rubber heel area. This design aids shock absorption and reduces the weight of the shoe. By modifying the concentric circle outsole design with a flex bar in the forefoot, flexibility is increased while retaining excellent traction. The cup sole wall has been extended up and around the heel for stability to the rear foot area. The forefoot flexibility and lateral stability are critical to the performance of a basketball shoe. The Nike Airship PE features independent forefoot stability straps, which are incorporated into the lacing system for greater forefoot stability during lateral movements. These straps cover the V-style flex cut on each side of the upper, which aids flexibility. The Nike Air Ship PE is constructed on a new last, which combines a snug heel and forefoot with a roomy toe box and more accommodating fit. It's fully board lasted for stability and torsion rigidity. This might be the single best literature that Nike's ever created. Just giving us the information and insights on why they created what they created back in the day. You don't get that type of details, in my opinion, in this day and age. And even reading that, it makes me look at this shoe and go, wow, they're really like futuristic. And even though the shoe is almost like 40 years old or whatever. But anyways, that was a really good definition of what uh, they actually created here. The white leather feels pretty nice, actually. It's pretty thick cut. If you look at the collar and the cut, around it's actually pretty thick but i don't really want to get into the jordan brand quality stuff again like i've always said like basically jordans just don't have like the best quality leather no matter what it's an air jordan sneaker so you can't expect it to be super crazy but for an air jordan sneaker uh the uh the leather cut looks like it's pretty thick at least from the sides of the shoe but anyways you have white laces you have orange laces as well i think i would probably do one of each just for fun or maybe both of them at the same time uh, because there is a little bit of orange on the shoe but there's definitely some room for some additional orange orange colors. There's orange around the collar, the swoosh, the liner of the shoe, the Nike Air on the tongue, and then the outsole uh, traction. So that is what I see there. But all in all, the Airship, what do you guys think, man? It's one of those things that they released that had a lot of luster and hype, especially for collectors, because they finally are releasing. They were super limited, though. I think they dropped during like one of the All-Star weekends. Of course, I didn't get any of them. Uh, they've had a couple different colorways drop of the airships so far and now they're just starting to release more and more through the boutiques and whatnot i haven't seen these ones drop on nike.com not sure when if we're going to see that uh, but you know there have been a couple different versions that have just hit boutiques and not really hit .com like the AJKO Air Jordan ones, the orange ones that I got when I was in Vegas. I just don't understand. Like that one was really cool, but that was one again where they just didn't really have in Nike.com. So happy that I got an extra orange one. Uh, happy that I uh, picked up a pair of these. If you guys are interested in buying a pair of them, I'll link them in the description. But leave some comments. What do you think about the luster of the Airship? Is it something that is going to go down? Sometimes when Nike releases stuff like this, it satiates the palates of the people that really wanted it. But there's such a small minority of people out there that want to know about this type of stuff uh, that it doesn't really satisfy the masses. A similar example is the Air Jordan 1 with the Air Jordan 2 midsole on the bottom. It's actually something that they tested back in the day where Jordan wore the Air Jordan 1 upper with the Air Jordan 2 midsole just to start testing out uh, the new midsole. So it was like sample pairs. They didn't actually release them back in the day. Then they did like an actual release of that years later and they did terribly. I mean, they didn't even sell for like retail for the most part on those. ones. now who knows what they're going for because the colorways are nice. But anyway, it's kind of cool. I like that they're doing it. Happy to see uh, some nice history uh, behind it. And uh, it's nice to see stuff make their way to the forefront, stuff that we didn't know. It would have been cool to see something in the airship guide here about Jordan and the history of uh, what we have known i guess but if you don't know that like an average person wouldn't know the difference between these and a pair of terminators so uh, it would be cool to see like some uh, sort of story about that but again this isn't that colorway so it's just the model not the colorway uh specifically that we're banned anyways thanks for stopping by and watching have a good rest of the day subscribe and notification bell and all that stuff all right peace guys